Hello everybody, my name is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal Essentials. It has been a while since my last Eternal Essentials and I want to start a new little series inside Eternal Essentials which basically covers the basic archetypes aggro, mid-range and control <coughs> and potentially also combo although we don't really have those yet in Eternal. So today we're gonna start talking about aggro just like in general uh, like what they are about and what to focus on and stuff like that. So I want to just uh, talk a little about aggro decks, aggro as an archetype and explain basically the archetype to you guys, um, especially to people that are less familiar with like the uh, in-depth intric intricacies of uh, any given archetype. And it, I think <coughs> this uh, lesson should help people better understand their role playing a given archetype, uh, should help them get better at building and tuning these archetypes, and generally like better understanding these archetypes and also like playing against them, playing them uh, matchups, uh, the matchups against aggro decks and stuff like that. Alright, so uh, where do we start? Like, um, I mean, <coughs> obviously as the name implies, aggro decks are aggressive so the general goal of an ag aggro deck usually is or like always is um, trying to kill the opponent as fast as possible and end the game quickly so in order for that to happen um, the most important like like aspect for aggro decks like the, there are these like core aspects like tempo and card advantage and stuff like that and some of them matter more or less for a certain archetype. And aggro is one of the more extreme archetypes, as you probably have thought already. Um, so aggro usually cares comparatively little about card advantage, probably to some extent like the least of all um, archetypes. Uh, and often like sacrifices card advantage to get the advantage that it cares most about which is basically um, tempo advantage and also to some extent obviously just simply like life total advantage <coughs> health advantage so um, tempo is the most important and like powerful access and like resource for aggro decks like for example let's take a look at like a typical aggro deck like this is a fairly extreme one you guys know this already that's my uh, post nerf Jido basically my Jido is Jido um, and as you can see here the car uh, the deck for example plays a lot of like one cost units even without Jido simply to gain tempo advantage it plays all the units that have a pretty good attack to power cost ratio and are as cheap as possible, which allows you to get more units in play and play more cards per turn than your opponent, <coughs> which uh, generates a tempo advantage. And also, one thing, one other uh, aspect and like access that is that aggro operates on and is very important to aggro is board advantage, which this also enables. Like basically, if we have these cheap units and we can play multiple of them as soon as turn 2 or sometimes even turn 1 if we consider grenade and drone that means we have a tempo advantage in the sense that we I mean I already talked about tempo in uh, another Eternal Essentials video I'll link this here so you can go back and check that unfortunately I didn't manage uh, to make further videos on stuff like card advantage but they will come in the future but I think these are like concepts that are reasonably familiar at least at the surface to most people so I think it should be understandable enough for this series um, so we get tempo advantage since we can use our resources more efficiently and play more cards <coughs> per turn than our opponent and at the same time we translate this uh, tempo advantage and the capability of playing 
multiple cards per turn into a bot advantage because we usually use that um, that capability of playing multiple things to play multiple units. So like this deck for example will usually go turn one, one drop, turn two, double one drop. So that means we have played three cards by turn two and usually have two or three units in play by turn three. Sometimes we will maybe go like one drop into one drop and like a rapid shot or a torch or a suffocate for example. Then we have put two units in play but rapid shot, suffocate and torch usually also uh, work towards gaining board advantage because we usually use them to remove something from the opposing board or avoid a trade in combat. So all our cards here aside from rally basically and even sometimes rally if it uh, enables trades that otherwise wouldn't be trades work towards advancing our board position and or reducing the opponent's board position and uh, using our power as efficiently as possible each turn. So this is like very important aspects of an aggro deck, especially of like an extreme aggro deck like this. But I'll uh, cover a Rakano aggro for example uh, as well in a moment and talk about the differences there. So this is like um, an extremely low to the ground aggro deck <coughs> which plays extremely cheap units to try and generate this mentioned early and fairly extreme bot advantage and then leverage it with cheap removal, rapid shot and rally and bandit queen to push that board and tempo advantage <coughs> into uh, a damage advantage and consequently into a win. And this is very important. Like. Um, the best aggro decks and the most efficient aggro decks are capable of doing usually doing multiple things a turn and at the same time also use up their entire power each turn so they like are built in a way that their curve <coughs> works works so that every turn most of the time you will be able to spend all your power even like on turn three if you don't have a three drop your deck often will have um, sufficient like one and two drops that you usually will have like a combination of one and two drops that allows you to spend your entire power so you maximize that um, board advantage and that um, and the potential tempo you can gain and cards like suffocate and torch for example are really great ways to gain tempo from the opponent like for example the opponent plays a three drop like the opponent plays a seraph on turn three and then if we suffocate this for one power that generates a huge tempo swing which is devastating to the opponent thanks to the board advantage and tempo advantage that we already have because um, at that point in time we have at least three units in play usually uh, two to three units in play that can attack and uh, spend one third of like our third turn to nullify the entire third turn of our opponent and can also at the same time play one to two other one drops, use a rapid shot <coughs> in combat or simply drop a two drop. And this is basically how aggro decks um, work and what aggro decks like need to do to, um, <coughs> to generate an advantage and push onwards. Because as you can see, like all these one drops are much weaker than say that mentioned Ziraf as a three drop. So the longer the game goes, the uh, weaker our cards get relative to the cards that our slower opponent that often will only be doing like one, sometimes two things a turn because they they have a curve that goes up to like five or six so they curve out uh, much longer with like more expensive cards and our one drops clearly got nothing on like a sandstorm titan for example. but aggro decks usually have and need to have ways to deal with these like better cards in the first couple of turns like for example a rapid shot usually beats a sandstorm titan on almost all of our units except our grenades and suffocate and torch also beats a lot of like one two and three drop units to um, basically delay the impact of the more powerful cards that our opponents usually have in their deck to further leverage 
that very important bot advantage that we generated early. So um, basically, to sum it up, Agridex need to get on board early, earlier than basically the non Agridex do. So starting from turn one, they need to get on the board as much as possible, as quick as possible. Basically, they need ways to deal with uh, more expensive, more powerful cards that um, slow down or stop our strategy since our cards um, are usually in comparison to our opponents weaker and therefore um, get outclassed the longer the game goes and yeah if we manage all that we basically uh, can overwhelm our opponent before they can mount enough defense and their, uh, and will die before they can unfold their own game plan. That's basically the idea. And now to le on to like another example which works a bit different, but still applies like the same essential concepts, just in a different way. So. Looking at Recano, for example, as you can see, Recano is like less low to the ground. It doesn't um, opt for such extremes of like an early board advantage, but this particular version still is um, is um, fairly low to the ground for Recano, like more low to the, lower to the ground than most Recano is. So we still have. 12 one drops, so this deck will still be able to most of the time present a one drop on turn one, and sometimes even be able to present three one drops by turn two, or like two one drops by turn two, and use like a torch or a finest hour to uh, deal with something that our opponent played earlier, or protect a unit from, say, a relic weapon on the opponent's turn. Um, but the main thing that still applies here is. This deck also fights for like an early board advantage. It just does so a little less by just putting a lot of very small but um, comparatively hard hitting one drops into play. It does so by curving out higher up the curve with very efficient and powerful units. So basically we have a lot of one drops and two drops here that are some of the most uh, powerful and efficient early attackers in the game. So this deck basically scales a bit um, a bit better into the uh, into the later game than the prior example, but it also like generates less of a strong early advantage. But what they both have in common is they both maximize their power spending and therefore their tempo. Like where the other deck usually does multiple uh, things on turn two and three, this deck will often do uh, go like one drop into two drop and then into three drop or into like a two drop and uh, one power card. But um, the same major principles apply. You want to spend your uh, power each turn completely and do so as effectively as possible by impacting the game and the board as much as you can. So um, that is generally the goal, trying to um, reduce the opponent's board, um, answer more expensive cards cheaply, say torching a 2-drop, vanquishing a 4-drop, stuff like that. And unlike the um, other example, which basically tries to swarm the opponent and kind of to some extent go wide and just put as many bodies in play as possible, so even if the opponent has a blocker, he can't block enough units to not still die anyway, and enhances that by, by playing cards like Rally and um, Bandit Queen that makes all the many units that the deck has even bigger so they hit harder. This deck goes more for like less units, a bit more expensive units, but also like more powerful units that are individually more powerful and has ways to make them even more powerful with Hammer of Might, Igen Imperial Armor uh, activations, Warcry Triggers, Emerald Monument and Deep Forge Blade basically. So um, this deck is basically more trying to generate a board full of units that are more powerful 
than the early units that other than that other decks put out. Like for example, our opponent drops the Sea Wrath on turn three. Then it's our turn four. We just drop in ham a Hammer of Might on uh, our best unit, and then we still have an attacker that can fearlessly attack into Sea Wrath without caring and some combat tricks to have our smaller units potentially attack into a bigger blocker and vanquish to get rid of the really big ones or like our opponent drops a turn 4 titan we don't have a vanquish it's our turn 5 we drop a deep forge blade on our unit once again our 2 drop or 3 drop is capable of uh, freely attacking into a powerful sandstorm titan on turn 4 thanks to the weapons that we have so this basically this deck basically uses weapons to generate tempo because weapons generate tempo in the sense that they're basically charge units and even better basically since a 3-3 charge unit for 4 would be a lot worse than a 3-3 weapon because the weapon allows say a 2-2 or like a 2-2 or a 3-3 that we played earlier to attack into a much bigger blocker that otherwise couldn't attack so well a 3-3 charge unit wouldn't do anything there suddenly we have like a a 6-6 six, six that or like a 5-5 five, five that can attack into the bigger blocker of our opponent and that that's how you generate tempo and momentum with this deck basically you just um, the opponent plays something that is supposed to stop you then you play something that makes sure that the opponent can't stop you and that you can keep going so it's just like uh, has ways to one up the opponent and keep up the momentum of having a bigger attacker than the opponent has a blocker um, to a point where the opponent might be so far behind that uh, no matter what they do they uh, cannot stabilize before they die to one of our big units and like the war cry of hammer of might and the other units also uh, helps with that because that snowballs into drawing like way oversized um, one and two drops that suddenly can can take on our opponent's three and four drops easily in combat that otherwise couldn't so this is basically like another way to get this like snowball snowball like momentum one deck does it by producing a lot of board and generating board advantage this way another deck produces uh, does it by generating a few very big units that are bigger than anything the opponent does and generate attack momentum and ways to like keep on uh, pushing and uh, pressuring the opponent that way. Aijin is another card that's really great at having with this, especially because if the game comes to like a stall and the opponent tries to like um, get an advantage, Aijin can just churn out four for mithril armors to uh, basically uh, yeah cross that plan and make our units way bigger than any regular units other decks play and just crush into their defenses. So let's sum it up here again. <coughs> Basically same concept applies. Tempo is everything. Spend your power as efficient as possible which is why it's very important even in a deck that doesn't want to go super wide like the first example to still have a sufficient uh, balance of one power cards, two power cards, and maybe like three power cards. So you um, usually are capable of having cards that um, as a total give you the power amount you want to spend. So you have like a sort of modularity and flexibility in spending your power. Like for example, <coughs> this deck has four finest hour and four torch and a lot of one drops. So on turn three, if we don't have a three drop to use our power efficiently, or we need to deal with something the opponent does, we can uh, mix it up. Like we, the deck has enough one and two drops that we can often go two drop and a one, one power card on turn three, for example, to do two things: to kill a blocker with combat trick or torch and deploy another threat. And these things are very important. Like if your curve is too high and you have too few cards in the lower curve slots, you will end up in situations where you can where you have like two cards but you can only play one because for example on turn turn three because you don't have enough one power cards in your deck you will sit there with two two, uh, two two power cards and suddenly you can only play one and waste one 
power like a third of your third turn in tempo, which is actually a really big loss because uh, at the same time our mid-range or control opponents will often do something powerful that costs three power and spend their entire t turn on one card that is more powerful than that two drop that we played. And in order to make up for that, we need to play a two drop and something else to overpower their uh, stronger two drop, uh, their strong, uh, stronger three drop, or interact with something they played on turn one or turn two to keep destabilizing them. And because obviously you're not uh, winning the game by playing two drops into your opponent's aggressive three drops while wasting power. Like if they uh, drop a three drop on turn three, we only play a two drop and do nothing else because we have no one power card. And then the same happens on turn four. Like on turn four, um, they drop a powerful four drop and all we are left with is like the other two power card that we had on turn three, and suddenly we draw into like a one power uh, a one power card too late, or because we have few and we might just draw into them too late, or we draw we draw into like a three or five plus card. Like then we have this three drop, so we can either only play another two power card, wasting two ma two. A power like for example say we have a vanquish on turn four that we want to use on our sense opponent sandstorm titan if all we have to go along with it is say a three drop that we drew off the top then we have to play the vanquish because otherwise we can't attack and then we play the vanquish and waste half of our fourth turn because we can't um can't play anything else because we have this three drop or even like this five drop in our hand that's why it's so important to first of all don't make your curve too high and second of all have sufficient redundancy in your lower slots like as you can see this deck has 12 2 drops and 3 uh, 2 power removal so there's like 15 cards that cost 2 and even 20 cards that cost 1 and 6 cards that cost 3 so the deck has a lot of flexibility in combining multiple cards to match whatever amount of power we want to use up and therefore maximizes at its chance of uh, being maximally efficient each turn basically and yeah that's basically what aggro decks are about and that's like a very important aspect to pay attention to when building and when tuning aggro decks and something that i often see uh, to some extent like ignored or uh, disrespected and you can see that when watching these decks in action or playing them yourself you will you will notice that the deck feels kind of slow kind of clunky you fall behind often you get stalled out often and that's usually due to a bad curve and or bad curve distribution and also to some extent a bad mix of threats and answers like as you can see here that's like another aspect that i, I want to touch on these decks need a sufficient balance between like threats units that generate pressure and ways to enhance that pressure and or answer problem cards like this deck has four finest hour four torch three vanquish to some extent igen and the six weapons and the monuments to basically do that job like i think normally you want like let's say two thirds one thirds distribution of those cards of your uh, like non-power cards in the deck or like 75% to 25% like usually one quarter to uh, to one third of your non-unit cards depending on the deck and stuff like weapons uh, kind of have a nice dual purpose of being sort of solutions to bigger blockers and allowing you to keep pressuring while at the same time also being threats because they generate more pressure uh, permanently because they stick around so um, cards like weapons and igen allow you to play virtually more answers to problematic situations than you normally could because um, in aggro decks like this um, pure like interactive answer cards you often can't play much more than 10 like as you can see here 
There's like four Finest Hour, four Torch, and three Vanquish. In the other deck, as you saw, there was like four Rapid Shot, four Torch, and two Suffocate. And then there's like these things that also generate a lot of damage and like are game enders like in uh, the Rally deck it was Rally and Bandit Queen. Here it's like Hammer of Might and Deep Forge Blade and Aijin, uh, which kind of help with problematic situations uh, as as well as um, are not like dead if the opponent doesn't have a threat. It's like kind of the same with Rally. Like if your opponent doesn't have blockers that you uh, can trade with with Rally, that's great. Rally is still a good card. Rally still kills the opponent. Same with like these weapons. But um, cards like Vanquish or Torch or Finest Hour are a lot worse than like Finest Hour is, and Torch still deal like three damage to the opponent, but they only do it one time, and that's not that exciting. And Vanquish is completely dead in your hand. Same goes for Suffocate, for example. Um, and it's even better if you have some um, additional answers attached to good units, like for example Valkyrie and Forza is great. It's it's a very efficient threat. Three power. Uh, three strengths for three power is a pretty good deal, especially when uh, keeping evasion in mind. So it's a flyer that can attack over a lot of uh, ground blockers, and at the same time the silence allows to deal with a lot of problems. So we virtually get thanks. To, that's why this card is so great. We get to run more answers without um, putting cards in our deck that sit in our hand if we don't have anything to answer. Like if our opponent doesn't have a unit on turn three and we have an enforcer in, play, in hand. No problem, just play the Enforcer, silence, nothing. Still a good card. While having like a removal or a silence card there, no target, nothing to do. We just have to pass the turn, can't spend our power. So flexible cards are also really important. And yeah, the balance between uh, units and these like uh, combat tricks, cheap removal cards, um, is very important because if you would replace these cards with more units, the deck would constantly uh, would frequently be in situations where it just couldn't do anything anymore opponent plays like one or two bigger units that stall out that stall out our smaller units and snowballs that advantage with some more removal and some more big units and then we're just sitting there waiting to die basically but the other uh, in the other direction it's also true like if we play too many of those cards we will quickly have uh, have no more units because we have hands with few to no units, we can even get redraws with no threats at all, or we have like one one or two threats all the time, and we just play our first threat, the opponent plays a removal on it, we have no second threat, or maybe we have a second threat, and our opponent plays a lot of removal, kills our second threat, and we are left with a bunch of removal and combat tricks without units in play, our opponent starts playing their, their first units on three and four. Um, we can maybe use our removal, but it doesn't matter because we have no pressure. So we're just trading one for one with decks like mid-range and control decks that are built to trade cards with their opponent and have cards that give them advantages after trading, like cards that draw multiple cards, cards that um, gain back multiple cards from the void, like um, Smuggler Stash and stuff like that. So that's why it's important to get that balance right and not play too many answers or too few answers in your anchor deck. If you play too few, you will get stalled out. If you play too many, you will run out of pressure and the opponent has all the time in the world to unfold their game plan. So usually in Eternal, I would say in most aggro decks um, of like a very typical kind, like we just talked about, um, will usually run like nine to 11 or 12 of these like um, dedicated answer combat trick cards like Finest Hour, Torch, Vanquish, Annihilate, Suffocate, stuff like that. Yeah, I think like 10 to 12 is like, yeah, 10 to 12 is like a, fa a fairly reasonable number that you usually see. Like in my uh, Rally Aggro, as you saw, I only play 10 because that deck is more dependent on having a lot of units to make cards like Rally good. In this deck it's a little more, it's 11, because we are a little less uh, dependent on putting a lot of units in play. We also have some more resilient units like Groundwatch Paladin. Uh, 
and ways to make the few units we have count with our weapons so we can afford to run slightly less units basically. Um, Alright, so that's it for like these. I think these are like two very good examples for prototypical aggro decks that deploy two different um, aggro strategies like the swarm type strategy and the um, strategy of trying to uh, tempo the opponent by playing very efficient and increasingly growing units by either making them grow with weapons or war cry and try to uh, keep board advantage not by quantity but by quality basically.